All right, so tonight I am back. Um, we got some user submitted decks uh, from my teammates. Uh, Tony wanted us to check out this Coral Helm deck. And then after that, we're going to switch over to Devoted Blade. Um, so let's take a look at the list real quick and kind of take it apart, see what's going on with it. Um, ooh, quick shout out to my teammate, Andrew Wolfice. He took top eight at the MCQ yesterday. We were in uh, Garden City, uh, Pandemonium. So that was pretty fantastic. Great job on his part. Um, I got the deck uploaded to Stream Decker right now as well. He did much better than I. I went O2 drop because I am trash at this game. <laughs> uh, I brought Warza to it and I did not do well. I uh, went against some uh, Jun back to back and my deck just was not cooperating. Um, pretty bad moles and just didn't uh, draw anything but lands. I guess some matchups and other ones I couldn't draw anything but lands. So, uh, or couldn't draw any lands. So, it was awkward. But. Let's take a look at what we have for tonight. So we're playing the Korra Helm combo. So if anyone's not aware of the Korra Helm combo here, we got the Knight of Reliquary. Um, so what the Knight of Reliquary lets you do is it's a 2-2 creature, 3 mana, plus 1, plus 1 for each land in the graveyard. You can tap it, sacrifice a forest, and get any land and put it in play. Um, what Retreat to Korra Helm lets you do is any time a land comes into play, you can untap or untap a target creature, and then you can scry. So you basically get those two cards in play, and you can pretty much run through your entire deck, just sacrificing a land, getting a fetch, using the fetch, getting a land, and just repeating to get a massive creature, and then you just swing in and kill. So, on top of that, we've got some utility lands with the Blast Zone here, the Field of Ruin, Gavany Township, Ghost Quarter, and Horizon Canopy. We've got eight fetches with the Misty Rainforest and the Windswept. We got a couple shocks here. We got Breeding Pools, Temple Gardens, four forests, it looks like. Uh, one island, one plains. Uh, over in the one drops, we've got three Birds of Paradise, two Elvish Reclaimers, four Nobles. We've got four Stone Forges, two Scavenging Ooses, three Retreats, two Trackers, three uh, Teferis. Four Night of Autumns, four Night of Reliquaries, one Feast and Famine, four Cocos, and a Batter Skull. Um, so pretty solid. And then over in the sideboard, we've got three Paths, one Mind Sensor, two Eidolons. Uh, we've got three Oofs, one Ooze, another Tracker, two Voices, one Bajuka Bog, and one Spell Sky. So I'm pretty excited to play this deck. I've actually never gotten a chance to play the Coral Helm combo, uh, but I am a big fan of Coco, Stoneforge, and everything that's going on here. So let's jump right into it. Yeah, I am pretty hyped for it as well, Tony. Keep this. We've got pretty much what we're looking for. We got Knight, Bird, Retreat, a couple interactive spells here with Knight of Autumn. We'll go Breeding Pool first. Oh, that did not mean things. Give me one sec, folks. Let me figure out what's going on. Hmm. That uh, should take care of the noise. What? Ooh, looks like 
looks like we've got burn. These Knight of Autumns are going to be wonderful for us. Curious if we can afford to burn or to shock ourselves here. Going against this, they mull down it looks like. I'm actually not going to hurt ourselves here. Playing multiple Knight of Autumn should be enough, right? There's no reason to push ourselves to the edge that much. There's a good chance our bird dies too, so we don't want to get stuck in a situation where we're shocking on ourselves. It's on bushwhacker version. I'm gonna take a lot of damage here. Gain life or not night. Night's just gonna be a three three. Let's gain life. I can definitely use another land. That way we can get this cocoa going too. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we can block. Ugh. I guess we block this. That way we can trade with it. Gain four, still die. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We're just not good at this game. <laughs> I don't want to show them anymore. Um, that was nasty. That was nasty. Okay. Uh, so they're on the creature heavy variant. Those are the cards I'm interested in. And maybe the Eidolon as well. Eidolon seems pretty good at blocking their stuff and stops them from doing any shenanigans. Um... I think with them being on this combo, we just don't need anything that's slow. Uh, don't need to grind it out. Mm -mm -mm, one more card to cut. Knight should still be a big creature for them to deal with, but I think we can trim one. Now let's trim a Coco. We're dropping our creature count by two. We're at actually we're adding more, so let's trim one knight. I would like to go first. Okay, we've got a noble into a stone forge, uh, into hopefully a batter skull. So. Yeah, I didn't think they were great, but at the same time, I don't think that the alternative is that great either. Because I think a lot of the cards we were taking out are just slower anyway. Reclaimer, at the very least, can get large and block, and it can come down early. But maybe it was better... Otherwise, okay, opponent's just killing our stuff. We don't get anything. It's okay. We do, however, get this Knight of Autumn. I'm not mad with our curve here. I mean, honestly. We're going to go Knight of Autumn, gain four, go to 22. They're going to turn three. They got no creatures on board. We're about to Coco next turn, and then we're going to drop a Batter Skull. I think we're fine here. Knight too. Let's go knight. I can make that a four four. 
block down majority of their board pretty easily. a green and blue source. See, I think I'm gonna get the blast zone. No, let's crack with Misty. Crack the Misty. Crap the other breeding pool, no damage. Let's see if this uh, germ connects. gain life and deal with three to us, that's fine. We will run out this bad boy. If I go voice, I can't use Coco, so I'd rather use Coco. Show them the idol line here. I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. Alright, so you're thinking that the reclaimers aren't great. They are one twos at the very least. Um, maybe just having the oof but i don't know i like having the uh the extra creature just coming down early i think i don't think there's anything else i'd really have over it and for us to be able to get a plus two plus on it shouldn't be too hard so i think we should just keep it big enough creature Keep it. Bird into night, into night. With the blast zone above the board. It's not bad. They're already mulling to six. Two, two, no land. Interesting. I 
think we are just going to run out Stoneforge since we drew it. Go get ourselves a Batter Skull. And run out this bird. They don't have the removal for Stoneforge. They're going to be in a tight spot. And otherwise we should. If they have to send the removal that way, it's still good for us. They have to do it right now. And if they do it now, they won't be able to attack his command, which means we'll be able to gain the four life. So that seems like all good things. We're about to take a good hit, though. Okay. Fork bolt does work. Were they hoping that we didn't have the mana? Probably. Let's shock ourselves. This blast on wiping their board will be pretty sweet too. All right, we'll just pass it over. Hold up Batter Skull. Yep. They have the bushwhacker effect. How bad is that for us? Alright, they've got three, three, six, nine, eleven, fifteen. I block here as. Take three, six, nine, live. If I block here, gain four, negates that. Live at one. Is that right? Negate this attack. Take three, three, two. Okay. Well, let's do that. Just two creatures. Should have blocked differently, actually. I should have blocked the uh, Burning Tree Emissary. And then that way I could have been using the, uh, the Blast Zone more effectively. That was a bit of a mistake there. Play that. Let's gain four life. Pass that back. We're at night life again. Path is rough. Definitely blocking here, and I think here. We can either <sighs> so I think what we want to do is just run out breeding pool, no damage, run out our noble, and then we can coco risk it, or we can run out the knight, which is only a two-two, though. I don't think we want to risk it that much. Well, either way, we're playing this breeding pool tapped. I 
What are the odds we miss? Actually, should we just cold call right now? Right? We can take out both of their 1-1s with a blast zone, but I feel like if we cold call right now, we can see if we can gain some life, maybe hitting a... No life, but all right. Solid creatures. Um, hold a path. We'll hold a path and the ability to eat something with ooze. Here for the trade. Path that. Yeah, we could have held a blast zone, Tony. I don't know. I I wanted to get a creature on board for the batter skull. Cause if we get to untap with a creature and swing for like six life here, I think that'd be pretty huge. Do we connect? If we connect, this game's so over. Mm -mm -mm. It's a bummer. got there I don't think holding up blast zone really let uh, let us hold up coco though because it it's in either or situation so like if you're passing with blast zone you're pretty much committed to using blast zone because you could have whip like we could whiff on the coco right that's why I felt like we had a coco in our turn if we hit knight of autumn I think one that's huge because then we can't go a Tarkas command and you'll gain the life uh, but then it also lets us know whether or not we need to run out of the creature or like with the noble or we could have uh, ran out the path. It, and that's what we did. We ended up holding the path. Like we technically have the mana to hold up, but I don't think we actually do. I might be wrong though. It isn't bad. I think we'll try it. I think we just want to get out. We gotta get off this Tefri. We can't get off the Tefri. Cool. So that makes our life easier. <laughs> We're gonna this night. Do I wanna try Breeze Shift? I do. I do wanna play Breeze Shift again um, for see if it's uh, where I want it to be for the next tournament. However, I think for tonight we are. Um, it's in our list of things we wanna do, but I don't think we'll be playing it particularly tonight. Uh, just because we've got two decks already submitted from my teammates. Let's not take any damage.
Yeah, I have homework every night pretty much until uh, I'm in my third week of this class, so I'll pretty much have homework every night. I can't run too late, unfortunately, as much as I want to. All right, let's go that. Sacrifice this. Run up the windswept sacrifice. Get that shock. And run out of these. Yeah, trying to balance between work, starting up a business, trying to play all this magic, trying to have a life, and uh, still doing everything in school. So, ooh, we are going against Mill. Okay. Crack the fetch. Let's run out this Teferi again. We got another remain for us. Could get out the Teferi right now. Sacking the Temple Garden. Land that. Curious if we should be pressuring them though. I think we do. I think we swing because we can, we can get a Monday effectively a two turn clock. Alright, so I swing with both. See what they do for blocks. Yeah. And then we'll eat Night of Autumn. Eat our noble. Night of Reliquary. And we are going to ghost quarter our forest. Yes. Go grab this other forest. And eat our night of autumn. Do they have a removal spell? They do. Okay. They're still dead on our turn unless they run out of blocker. Mine funeral, okay. That was 12 cards. So we're gonna lose another 12. Do they have another spell? If they do, we're dead. Yep, we're dead. Bummer. Do we want to bring, what do we bring in here?
Do we want to bring in the voices? For the large tokens? That that can bring. That doesn't seem bad. Other than that, I don't really see much else. I want to keep in the knights because they blow up those artifacts and enchantments that they're going to have. I don't mind ditching the oozes and bringing the voices in. Yeah, let's try that. Side in whatever you want, but don't side anything out. I'm like so against that ideology. I don't know. Like, do we just jam all 15 cards in and hope that's the best? Like, don't we want our deck to perform to the best of its ability to put on as fast of a clock as possible? Gonna go for the combo. They're not pressuring us too much. We could run out this Teferi. Now let's just run out the core home, see if we can get them. I don't know, I've never... I understand the logic behind it. Um, but... At the same time, I feel like that's not where you want to be. I guess it's probably okay to just side in the cards that you think are useful and not bring in, in the cards that aren't right. I think I'm just going to hold up Coco here and just keep swinging them. They're not really pressuring us with any removal spells. They haven't cast any archive traps too, so I feel like when we do day, we're going to do it all at the same time. Okay, so not bringing in everything, but bringing in the relevant cards that you do have, and that way you're just not increasing your deck count very much. I respect that. I'm not gonna do anything here because we've got lethal on board. So I don't want to get caught by like a bunch of archive traps or anything. Bouncing our dude. 
We don't have any protection spells, but it wouldn't matter if we did anyway. Okay. Do we field ruin them here? So what are the chances that they have? Like that's a free spell. What are the chances they have archive traps in hand? We have no blue sources left in our deck, actually. Other than this breeding pool in play. So that's interesting. <laughs> There's a lot of spells that kill us right now. The Ming at 43 is a good one, too. <laughs> All right, well. Don't even know if we can do that much damage. Aww. There's only one land left for us to go. Two cards left. No cards left. We die. Yeah, this matchup feels really hard. 
on the plus side, we had uh, enough to kill him on the swing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that did not feel good at all. Seems solid. I don't know why, but I just have this uh, terrible thing where anytime I play, like all the decks I enjoy playing, they're almost always bad to mill. No swamp. Here goes Stone Forge G. We just have similar tastes in decks. Solid. Gonna return nothing. See if we can hit a threat. We don't. Shadow, what do you got? <laughs> Next level tech. We don't have anything for you to take, opponent. Oops. Fine with me, I like my creatures. Also fine, we can still cast the batter spell. Oh no. Top, plus up, and we'll pass. Do we want to give up our noble? I don't think so, since we're just drawing the tougher anyway. It's kind of awkward. I always hate these situations, because we're going to bounce it. We're not going to be able to recast it. But if we don't, we're not going to be able to bounce it. So... Ooh, we can hold priority. Yes. How baller. The 
play Astrolabe? Teferi, that's fine. Let's play the land. We can tap down their knight, I mean their ranger captain. Draw a card. Play our bird. Swing for five. We'll have to chump block and hope they don't have battle rage. Block here and here. If they just pain themselves, they win, but see if they know that. They Oh, they did. Alrighty, so we want the paths for sure. Voices don't seem bad, neither do the uh, spell sky. Possibly this tracker as well. Night of Alms are interesting. They can blow up that. Um, they can blow up the Tide Hollow Scholars, but I'm not sure if that's worth it. I don't really think we should be going for the Coral Helm combo here because they're going to be ripping our hand apart really well. Then again, Teferis are kind of awkward. Maybe we keep in just two. And if we happen to combo, we combo. And if we don't, we don't. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I think I'm good with this. We're just going to get into a grindy matchup here because they're going to be ripping our hand apart. I don't want to be too susceptible to things. I'm good with this. I know that if we, uh, if we get our hand disrupted, we can lose our knight, but and we'll lose white. But this is, this is a pretty solid hand here. If we can just get one turn where they don't disrupt us, we'll be able to land that knight and then go into Coco. Yeah, it is. It, it's a solid deck with even without the combo. And I think that's the part I always appreciate about the Cora Helm deck, but probably take the knight. Yep. It's fine. 
We will run out our bird. Beat them for one. We lose our cocoa. Blast zone will be cool and awkward all at the same time. Can't thought seize the top of the deck opponent. All right, so I'm just gonna grab the sword here because I want to run that out immediately. to equip to this bird. Card. We get to untap. We're going to run out this retreat. And we'll pass it over. Let's see what our opponent's got. To save the force too for a scry next turn. Oh, you know what? I guess it doesn't matter. I was thinking it needs to be tapped, but it doesn't really. I'm gonna keep that on top because I want to be able to tap down their creature if for some reason makes it weird here. Luckily, they just have a land. Oh, this is a little awkward. I'm trying to think if I would keep this hand if it was one less land, and I think I would. But this batter skull kind of makes it like a mulligan already, so I'm gonna mull this. Yeah, this is better, I think. We'll ship the cocoa.
We will pass. There goes our tracker. We're so good at this game. Alright, because it's going to be susceptible for one turn, let's grab the batter skull, I guess, at that point. Doesn't really matter, right? I will pay. Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Okay, I love this card. Let's play that, and we'll just pass. That was a great draw. That exalted effect's gonna be fantastic. Push is fine. Could be getting baited, but let's crack this. What is the opponent paying for? Dismembering us. Okay. Not ideal, but we'll deal with it. Can't activate it. Yep. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad to have that. No blocks.
land was pretty good so we can protect our batter skull. I guess just in case we should tap these for mana. draw here. Path that. Pretty amazing top deck like we do. It is my specialty, the top deck. Let's play this, we'll pass it over. Probably should just equip, right? Wouldn't have been able to protect against uh, anything, but... I guess that probably would have been worthwhile. What are we really protecting against? A Cold Guns Command? What are the odds they have that? Shadow, sure. If we're going to go that line, we're just going to pump our team. One, two, three. I'm not opposed to that. All right. Yeah, this really should have been equipped. We would have been able to hit. I don't know. Hitting is always awkward against um, that shadow decks. You like get them down, but if you don't kill them, they just kill you back with a battle rage. This attack definitely feels like they have a battle rage. Maybe not. gonna rip it out of our hand now. <laughs> oh, no, that's a ranger captain though, so then they can sack it and prevent us from casting it. Yep. Yeah, I, don't, I did not play that hand well, that game well at all. I was being like really defensive with uh, being able to return the the batter skull to my hand. I don't know. It it felt like it punished us pretty badly by doing that. I 
At the same time, they probably had that call against command in hand, so if we did equip to the bird, they would have just blown it up, shot the bird, and then hit us really hard, so that would have been bad too. I'm just gonna get the sword here. It looks like we're solidly going against Panza. And being able to make them discard will be pretty sweet. I mean, you're not wrong, this deck is cool though. Odds are they have a bolt, but... Attempt to equip to the stone forge. Yeah, made it. Alright, so they shouldn't really have anything at this point, so let's run out the Cora Helm. Pretty sweet. And we'll pass it their way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're going to be able to Coco, do all kinds of shenanigans. Oh, great. Come on, opponent. What you got for us? Ooh, that's interesting. I think we wait to see what they do with with uh, Karn. I don't think they're gonna do much. I don't know. I don't know if they know that they can uh, activate the Karn on the sword and make it equip, unequip. But then at that point, then we just have more creatures. They got a bridge. How much do we care about that bridge? Probably not. Well, I mean, probably a decent bit, but let's call go see if we can pressure them to win this game. So, Knight of Autumn and a Stone Forge. What do I want to do with the Knight? Probably just put the counters on the knight, right? Get a really good alpha swing. Yes, batter skull.
Mm. Equip the sword over to the knight. Swing the knight at them. No, we can't activate it. We can't equip. Okay. So, change thought process real quick. Swing the stone forge at them still. Swing the knight, the stone forge, and the ooze at the Karn. Untap. So, this way we guarantee the Karn's death. So we'll go batter skull. I'm gonna swing this with them, and then swing these at Karn. Already, I don't think we want to do anything crazy. They're gonna run on Snaring Bridge and have three cards in hand. So I think we're good to just pass here. I don't wanna increase our creature size if we don't have to. Bird and a bridge. Yep. It's good with us, honestly. Okay. that down nope let's equip the sword over to this noble everything can swing but the knight and the living germ let's run out this other ooze so we're gonna get to untap I'm not gonna run out the noble because I'm trying to see if we can get some sneak attacks in to the best of our ability with them. attack either. Alright, one of these don't matter. So. Do this, tap that. Run this out. Equip this. Over to this, doesn't really matter. Let's 
single stone forge, two stone forge, three, they block it or they don't. Let's do three. Good for us. No cards, EE -E on one. We're just gonna pass. Can't swing without losing our noble. They'll pop the EE, -E, and then I guess we'll run off the bird and equip it with the batter skull. on our ooze. We can't keep it alive. That's why it's dead. Do they not have a way to get rid of their own? I mean, they should be able to win, right? I don't understand. Why don't they go get the lattice? boy down mm -hmm. this is uh not going great yeah, I feel like they should have locked us out of the game. They're giving us some a lot of extra turns. We have, you know, we, we have a 
three more copies of Night of Autumn here, so as soon as we draw one of those, we're gonna win the game, but we gotta draw one of those or one of the Cocos to get them. Three works as well. Except we don't have the mana. <laughs> oh man, that's a bummer. Hmm. Run out the bird for it to get shot, I guess. Red, 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 red. Yeah. Okay. You got a utopia scroll. Hopefully they value our other targets more. Nope, they don't. We can hit one of those spells. We just need to draw a white source now. Yeah, or a white source will get us there. Goodbye, sword. I still don't understand. Do they not have a lattice?
Okay. Our board's getting too small here, and they're per I have too much on the board now. I'm just gonna concede and go and say let's because they're gonna keep everything off of our board at this point. And they just got the collar. I'm done. Collar's gonna wipe our board. I think we want the paths. Teferi seemed good, and I think having the combo seems relevant. Bring in two paths and call it good? I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they didn't actually have a lattice in their sideboard. Because I think it's too cute, but we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this real hard. Uh, we're just gonna go and fetch up a forest right now. Let's hope they have a turn one Utopia Sprawl. That'd be great. Yeah! Yeah, and we have basic. This game's over. We got this. We got this. I could have sequenced this differently to where I play the island, um, ran out the night, then I'd be playing Temple Garden here where I could be running out the nobles. So that's a bit of a just missequencing on these lands. Noble, and I'm gonna swing with just the tracker here. I don't think they'll block. There's no reason for them to block. And then we'll just hold up Coco. I think that's fine. Even though I want to crack these clues, I think that's fine because I'd rather hit the Coco. 
right? Or do we just crack the clues because we can still do the Coco next turn? Yeah, let's do that. Seven. We could run out Teferi, bounce their bird, force them to block with their tireless tracker unless they want to lose their Karn. Not against that. Interesting. So, like, we just got a two for one on that swing. That's really weird. Bird. What's up, Ooh Glory Fades? Thank you so much for the follow. Blood Moon is fine. We don't really care about that, right? Hit him with this Coco. Let's go Night of Autumn and a Reclaimer. Any order? We're gonna. Blow up that blood moon. Do we just swing with the team? They can block this. Hit him for one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not lethal. So let's not do that. They will, however, swing. So, right, we have to have three. Yeah, they had to jump, but I didn't think that was as worth it. Uh, um, just because we can advance our board state even further here. I want to EE for three. Which is fine. Because now they're just dead.
this hand's too slow, I think. This hand's better. We'll keep this. Let's ship back the Temple Garden. That way we can go fetch up our basics. I get it might have been better to push that situation though, Sam. seem good for us. With them getting that, I think I'm just going to grab the breeding pool. Grab the planes here. We're gonna run out liquid metal and start landing us, so let's present a big threat. We should be able to run out our night uh our night of autumn and blow up that liquid metal going. think they can let us lock us. Swinging doesn't seem as worth it. We could run out the Night of Autumn. Oh no way! We only had one basic. <laughs> oh, that's so awkward. That is so incredibly awkward. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was our only planes. They uh, blew it up with the Karn liquid metal coating. No, we didn't sack it with the knight. Do they have a pillage here for us? I feel like they have a pillage here. Oh, no, nope, ancient grudge. There's a good chance we're just out of this game right now. We 
We need to like rip the cocoa right here. Nope. That's game. All right, having the single pl uh, planes backfire pretty bad there. Ooh, very tragic. All right, last game, I mean last match with this um, deck, and then we're going to switch over to the Devoted Blade deck. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think it has potential. The only question is, is it better than the other decks that are being played right now? Yeah, I like the band, uh, blade package as well. That's why I'm curious uh, how this will do compared. Uh, this deck is going to do compared to the devoted blade combo deck, just because like we're still presenting a um, strong backup plan, but we have that stoneforge package too, and, and in the in the devoted blade list we can find the viridian longbow as well, which is pretty sweet. There goes our noble. Yes. I would like a batter skull. Yeah, Jeff ran the bent, um, Stoneblade deck yesterday at the MCQ. I didn't get a chance to ask. Get a breeding pool, shock ourselves, we're not this reclaimer, pass it over. Pretty sweet. 
Let's swing with all the things. We got a Coco as well, so that's going to be great. Effectively a nine nine, two nine nines. Mm -mm -mm. Let's run out the cocoa. Let's go out the cocoa. Not as great, but that will be pretty good enough. We can be able to get ourselves a sword. Yes, yes. Deputy of Detention or Reflection Mage aren't bad, in my opinion. If they got Battle Rage, we're just dead. Right? Block. Block. Battle Rage that becomes 20, they can go down, make it 12, it's 24. Yep, block here as well, of course, protection. All right, see if that's enough. Yeah, we can reclaim her for the blast zone, Tony. That would have been a good call. Um. I completely forgot about that effect, to be honest. Um, Feast and Famine of Light and Shadow, I really think depends. If you have a little bit more burn going on in your meta, I think Light and Shadow is the way to go. You can still grind people out with Light and Shadow um, because you can recur your creatures, and the extra three life is pretty huge. So I think that's the big thing. If you're in a more of a Jun meta um, and the protection uh, for blockers is relevant with the green, then that'll be good, being able to untap. But otherwise, I think that's the way to go. This is what we brought in the last time. Did we keep the combo parsley last time? I think we did, because I think we cut all the knights, right? Let's try keeping the knights this time. Yeah, the protection from white is pretty sweet, and there's just still so much burn floating around. Like, that's why I'm a big fan of the Light and Shadow. Um, in the Bant list, this hand... Oh, this hand's awkward. I'd keep it if it had a white source, but it doesn't. Is it still good enough without that white source? We got Ooze into Tracker, and then we get a white. 
I'm going to try this, because I feel like this hand has potential with the Blast Zone here, keeping them off Shadow. And then we could just Field of Ruin turn 3, get the White Source, then play Stoneforge. It's a little slow, but we can get there. Okay. Not even a concern. Yeah, so overall, I think by default, if I were going a big tournament, I'd probably use Light and Shadow right now with Batter Skull. I also kind of like having a, th um, a third fetch up, but uh, whether that's better in the sideboard or better in the main, um, I don't know. I think I'm just going to pass and not run off the tracker. There's not too much value in the tracker, and I'd rather go get the uh, white source or eat stuff with ooze. I'm not going to block that. Yeah, we could have done that. The only thing I was thinking about is if I did that, they could swing with the Tide Hollow Scholar without fearing that we would block with the Ooze, because I feel like otherwise we have to keep the Ooze. Because we want to go get a White Source, right? Yeah, not sure how relevant it actually is, but we would have just taken another two damage, I think, going that line. The last zone, take out the shadow, take six damage, and then go from there. I kind of like that. Alternatively, we can run out a Reclaimer and a Knight, but the Knight's a 3-3. Take a big hit. Mm. I like... What do you think here, Tony? Should we uh, run out two creatures or hold up Blast Zone? Okay. 
I did as well on initial thought, so just was second guessing myself a bit. We want to go night. Reclaimer and pass. Digging for a battle rage. I'm not gonna block. Ooh. Path the tide hollow, then we can path the death shadow using knight or reclaimer. Seems good. We can run out tracker, right? Tracker, hold a path, sack a land using night, shock in the temple garden path, the shadow. Yeah. I think we just have to path this turn is the key. Because they can sack their ranger captain in response to us if we did it on their turn yep yep Just pass here. Uh oh, hmm. I'm trying to think if we should be sacking our land, but I guess we can wait. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that now. If we sack a uh, land, they'll just in response sack their ranger. We could double block the ranger captain, and we'll be getting our knight up to a 6-6 six, six, and our elish up to a 3-4. So I think that's fine. So let's go block, block, okay. Yeah, he, he sacks in response, but we'll be able to double block this unless he has... Um, Unless he has Battle Rage. If he has Battle Rage, we're probably just dead anyway. Cool, he didn't sack anyway. Let's get another shadow.
Yeah, pretty interesting. I felt like he could have, uh, because he knew we had the path, so he could have made it so he could have ate one of our creatures and just lost the ranger in response, which I think was worth it, making us lose our knight. I'm going to run up the noble. And I think we're just passing here. So we can go block, block. Sack becomes a six, sack that becomes a seven, use the Elvish Reclaimer, sack as well. It comes in a play tap, but I think that's fine. Fatal pushing our knights. It's a bit tragic. Okay. We can go get a township. Try to boost up our board. Not against that. Another night's pretty good. We're just in chump block mode and hope that he does not, that they do not have a battle rage again. I think we are. <laughs> Can swing with this tracker. Yep, block. Alright, I got one card left. Cool. It's not Battle Rage. I feel like we can swing with 
tracker into a 9 9 yet, but we can do it next turn. We got that one. All right, so that's going to be it for that league. Um, you know, I didn't. Uh, I thought this deck was pretty good. I like the core shell of it. I feel like we need some like some flex slots here, like some deputy of detention, some reflective mages, possibly in place of uh, these four knight of autumns. Um, the oozes, I'm not sure how relevant they are in the main board right now. That might be better in the sideboard slot, just because there's not a, a ton of graveyard decks floating around. Um, possibly look into a couple more um, lands or utility, like the protection land in the main wouldn't be bad. I would have liked that, being able to just... Because we can do that with the um, the Knight of uh, Reliquary combo. We actually need like the protection land, right, in order to swing through if they only have one color creature in, in play. So those would be the only things I possibly want to change about the main. Uh, the cyborg... Um, yeah... Okay, cool. So that, we're on the same point here. I, I think no oozes. I don't mind having Knight of Autumn. I just think four is a bit much. Um, possibly want to swap out that Feast of Famine for a Light and Shadow, or just adding in a Light and Shadow. Um, and then we can tweak the sideboard a little bit. But other than that, deck is pretty sweet. All right.